Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from MoboxGraphics.com. And in this video, we're gonna be going over how to create a, I'm quoting in the air, you can't see it, a realistic earth in After Effects. Now the term realistic is totally thrown out here because um, it's basically an interpretation um, of what you would think the earth would look like. The earth actually looks totally different from, from space, but it's kind of like, a, um, it has realistic elements. And you could probably use a lot of these tools and effects that we're doing um, to create something that looks more realistic, but it's a little bit stylized, but I think it looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and jump here into After Effects. And I'm just gonna drag in um, a few files um, from a second monitor that you can't see. Um, so I'm just going to drag those in there. I'll tell you what they are in a sec, but I'm just going to create a new comp and I'm going to call this, um, real istic earth because I can't spell. Um, and I'm going to make this 2560 by 1440 and that doesn't work because I need to uncheck the lock aspect ratio. So 2560, 60 Hertz, um, 10 frames per or 10, uh, seconds that's fine and I am not going to come back to this for a while so um, uh, in here I've got a cloud map you can barely see their little icon this is clouds um, I have earth with kind of the earth at night with the lights and then I have an earth and then I have what I call a moon landscape but it's basically just a texture so um, another thing to note here is I'm actually running in 16-bit color and the reason is is that some glow effects look brighter um, and better when you're running 16-bit normally it's at 8-bit so you could change that Okay, so I'm just gonna start with the earth landscape. So I'm gonna drag earth mask down to a new comp. And you can see here that it's kind of a PNG. I just downloaded this online. You could probably just get it in, in Google. Um, I will create, um, this will be up, uploaded obviously to Patreon. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to add all these layers. If I can't, I'll create a document on, on how to add them and then how to add them um, into the composition. So that way um, you can just kind of get going and it doesn't say that you've lost any files or you're missing any files. So we're starting here with this earth and I'm actually just gonna create um, the water. So I'm just gonna hit layer new solid and I actually know the color code for the water color that I want. It's 0B304F. That's the color water I like, and I'm just gonna hit okay and drag it underneath the earth mask. Now this looks pretty artificial still, I'll admit, um, but I'm now gonna drag the moon landscape on and just hit S on the keyboard and just scale it down. That's probably fine, 25% is probably fine. I'm gonna drag it above the royal blue and I'm gonna change the blending mode to soft light, uh, not on the royal blue, on the moon landscape, change it to soft light and hit T on the keyboard and bring it down to like 55%. So that makes it kind of a nice little like texture underneath. Um, also, I'm gonna go come in here and I'm gonna add a fill, or I'm sorry, not a fill, a drop shadow onto the earth. And I'm just gonna increase the softness like pretty heavily. So that makes it look like, uh, you know, the water is uh, various levels. So that looks pretty good, um, but we're gonna make it even better. Um, I'm going to rename this composition to Earth Base. And now I'm actually going to um, very simply selecting the Earth Base, hit Control D and rename this to Earth Night. And while I'm over here, I'm actually going to create a folder calling it um, Accessory Files. I think I spelled accessory wrong. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to drag in the uh all the these textures into the accessory files that way they don't get in our way and then i'm going to open up earth night so earth night looks just like earth day because i duplicated the layer but if i come in here and i drag in the earth lights and hit t on the keyboard and drag the transparency down you could see here that basically i'm going to be using this to line up um, where i want my uh, lights to be so I usually pick one point to line up. So for instance, I picked kind of LA area and selecting the pan behind tool, I then move this anchor point to that point. And now if I hit S on the keyboard and scale this up and down, it will scale up on that point. And I know that that point's accurate. So I think that that looks actually pretty good. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, it's lining up pretty well. So now I can just 
kind of bring this transparency back up to 100 and I can get rid of all of these earth layers. Basically, I just use that as a guide uh, because you can see here that um, the layer isn't perfectly, uh, you know, perfectly sized and, or scaled. So now I know that the earth and the earth knight are matched. Um, so I'm gonna add two effects to this. I'm gonna add um, brightness and contrast, and I'm gonna add black and white. So brightness and contrast is pretty self-explanatory. Increase the brightness, decrease the con or increase the contrast. Um, and then now I'm gonna just adjust these until all of this disappears. So I know there's a lot of blues. So I'm gonna bring the, the blue down or the cyan down. And I'm gonna bring the blues down. And you can see here that it basically gets rid of all of the blues. I'm gonna increase it a little bit because I like to I do like to see some underneath here, but I don't like to see a lot of it. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. Um, now I can actually uh, adjust now the brightness and contrast so we don't get so, so contrasty lines. Um, you do get some pretty crazy um, stuff going on. So that looks pretty cool. And now I'm gonna add a glow to this. So you can see that that kind of brings it up a bit, a bunch. I'm not gonna change the glow effects. I might increase the um, the radius slightly, but I don't wanna to go too crazy with the glow. I think that that looks pretty good. So now I have my earth base, I have my earth knight, and the last thing I need to do is make the clouds. So I'm just going to drag this cloud PNG down into a new composition, and now I have to start making some changes. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's no background. The background is actually black. So I wanna get rid of that. To do that, I'm just gonna create a layer new solid, make it white, and I'm gonna use a luma mat. So if you don't know what a luma mat does, basically it says if it's black, make the transparency zero. If it's white, make the transparency 100%, and then interpolate everything in between. If it's gray, make it partially black. Um, so in here, I'm gonna change the track mat mode to luma mat. And now if I toggle the background, you can see that the background is transparent. Great, we're 10% of the way there. Um, here's where things are gonna get a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna add some effects called rough and edges onto this. And I'm gonna add one more effect called, um, it's slipping my mind. Let me look at my cheat sheet. It is called drop shadow. That's literally mean, it, that is the most anticlimactic effect. I'm not even gonna add the drop shadow yet, actually. Um, I'm just gonna work on this uh, rough and edges here. So I'm gonna change the border to maybe two, the sharpen edges to maybe 0.3, fractal noise is fine. The size I'm gonna maybe make 250, um, and the complexity at two is fine, I think. Um, Actually, that made no changes. So I'm gonna delete that. I forgot one step. I'm gonna select both these layers and hit Control Shift C and create a new comp. So that way my background's black or my background is transparent. And now I add the rough and edges. And now I use my cheat sheet to tell me that I should do two for the border, 0.34 for the sharpness, and the scale should be 250. So that looks pretty good so far but it's very static. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, add a scale keyframe and a complexity, no, oh, I did them all. Okay, uncheck those and an evolution keyframe. Drag my um, time scale all the way to the end and let me get rid of that notification for you guys. And I am going to increase the scale and change the evolution. So basically over time this will slowly change. So that's changing way too fast. One way to get around that is if I hit you on the keyboard, set new keyframes, and then just drag these to the end. Delete the old ones. Just drag these ones to the end. So now you can see it's, it's changing, but it's changing very, very slowly. So it is changing, but just very slowly. 
Now I can add a drop shadow to this. And I'm going to increase the opacity a lot. And maybe increase the distance as well. Could always change this later. Okay, so now I think we're ready to deal with the realistic earth composition. I'm going to start by making a space background. Layer, new solid, make the background black. Hit OK. Um, create a layer new, solid, and make it white. And hit OK. Search for an effect called CC Ball Action. Drag it on. Increase the scatter, which makes it look insane. Um, increase the ball size until it looks like space. <laughs> Basically, it's like it's like that old meme where it's like how to draw a zebra. It's like stick figure zebra. That's basically what I just did. It's that easy to create a space background. One thing you'll notice is these giant stars here that are totally unrealistic. Um, you could adjust the grid spacing, but that doesn't really do anything. What you really want to do is adjust the um, instability until you get one that is the most uniform. And then just drop the ball size down until it fits your needs. So that looks pretty good. We got a lot of stars. There are a couple large ones still. You just don't want giant ones like that one that just went across the screen. So you can mess with it until you find something that works. And I think that that works. So I'm going to lock those layers so I don't accidentally go mess around with them. So if I bring in the realistic earth, not the realistic earth, the earth night, the earth day, and I open the accessory files and I pull my cloud map out, put that on top. Wow, the clouds are the most high res here. I'm going to drag the cloud map out also because, well, why not? Okay, now for the fun part. I'm going to make the clouds invisible for a second because I think they're just going to get on my nerves. Um, but this Earth Knight looking pretty good. One thing I'm noticing is that there's a white bar at the bottom. So I'm just going to open the, the night map here and see what the heck's going on. And I can see that there's a, some pixels missing. I'm just going to create a layer new solid. Make the color kind of whatever that color is. Put it at the bottom. And now we just got rid of the line. You can see now the line is gone. Perfect. Um, I don't really like how that's white. So I'm also going to come back into the night. And maybe I can make some changes here. I'm trying to think about what I can do. Um, eh, I'll do it later. But I'm just going to go look for an effect called CC Sphere. We've done this so many times, but I'm just going to drag that onto um, the cloud or the, the night map, and then onto the then onto the Earth base. And um, I'm going to link some stuff here. So if I open up the night open up rotation and lighting and shading holding alt i'm going to set keyframes for x y z radius and i think that that's it but i'm also going to hit r on the keyboard and set one also by holding alt on radius or i'll sorry on rotation and also on size um, i don't really need to do size so i'm actually not going to do size um, but rotation definitely. So now if I select the earth base and hit you on the keyboard on earth night, it does nothing because I don't know how after effects works. I'm just going to open all this up. Um, that's so strange. It should totally give me all of them. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, I don't need them to tell me what to do. I'm just going to drag these pick whips so now I'm going to hit R on the keyboard and R on the keyboard and drag that pick whip um, was there any more here that I'm missing uh, ro rotation no radius maybe I missed Yep. Okay. I missed that one. Okay. So now we're cooking with fire. 
um, which is the way the caveman used to eat and used to make food. But now basically when I increase this radius and add a rotation to the earth base, it changes the earth night also. Yay. Um, <laughs> okay. <sighs> this is where things are gonna get a little bit crazy. So I need to find out a way to make it so this is only showing part of the night. And here's a really easy way to do it. I'm gonna duplicate this night, Earth Night, and I'm gonna name it Earth Night Mask. What else? I'm, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new composition, make the background color white. But that probably doesn't do nothing for me um, by changing it white. I actually need to create a layer new solid and make that white. Great. I'm gonna rename this to white. So by making sure the Earth Knight mask is selected, I'm gonna hold Alt and drag this white layer there and it will just basically replace it for me. Isn't that great? What it will also do is it keeps all of these um, linking, all of this linking effects that I did. So when I rotate the Earth base, that rotates it's it's great it's honestly the greatest thing right you're learning so much you're not even going to know what to do with yourself you're going to go back to school or go back to work on monday and you're just going to be like i learned something so great um and his name's mike from a box you should watch him so i'm going to kind of make whoa not do that i'm going to make this more more extreme um by looking for maybe a brightness contrast Make sure I'm dragging it to the right one. Just like that. Now what I can do real simply is select the Earth Knight and change it to Luma Mat. And that didn't work because I actually meant to say click Luma Inverted Mat. And now we're talking. But you notice that it's pretty dim. It's not really looking too hot. Um, so if I select this Earth Knight and you come in here this took me hours of my life to figure out, so you're welcome. But I increase the ambient, boom. Look at that. I'm getting now the nighttime showing up there. Um, but it's kind of bleeding over kind of a lot, and I don't really like that. That's not really doing it for me. So this um, Earth Night Mask, I'm just gonna open up, and I am going to make some changes here. So I can mess with the ambient or I can mess with the intensity. Intensity probably does the most. Uh-oh. Uh. Bring the intensity down and maybe adjust this brightness and contrast. So now when it actually gets dark, then you actually see everything, so that's great. Um, and also when I click the Earth base and I rotate it, wow, look at that. But those lights are awfully white. Lights aren't that white. So I should probably make a change. But where should I make the change at? Maybe Earth Night, I'll make the change. I think all this stuff is way too bright also. And bring the brightness down a tad. But how do I make this white? Well, one way is I can create a layer new solid and I can make that solid kind of yellow and it's called, oh, I thought it said P yellow solid. I was like, well, that's nice. Uh, it's called pale yellow solid. And now we got something that looks a little bit more realistic. But man, that is still like awfully, awfully crazy. Um, let's make some more changes. Why not? Make sure I don't have anything crazy going on on the lights. Uh, while I'm here, actually, I'm just gonna rotate this by 23 degrees so it actually is representat representative of the actual Earth. Um, and I should have probably also mentioned, which I didn't do, is that I should probably also link the light height and the direction. 
because those things can change. And I'm going to have to do that for both of these. Um, so, sorry, you have to add another step. Uh, let's see, light height. Eh, that needs to open. Light height and light direction. Light height and light direction. So now when I come in here and I change the direction of the light, it follows it. And when I adjust the, like that, it follows it also. Um, for the sake of trying to figure this out, I wonder if I just bring the transparency down, if that would help me. Bring the transparency down actually does help. I'm just going to kind of cheat and do that. Um, but you know, there are other ways to change it. I mean, you can go into this thing and, and adjust this all day long to your heart's content, but I'm going to be lazy and I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to set this up exactly the way I want it to be. So by changing the light, the light height, and I'm going to add a rotation to the Y. So because I'm American, I'm kind of a, um, narcissist. But um, today I'm going to make it so um, you can see Africa and Europe. So I'm going to start it there and this thing is going to rotate like that. So I just totally deleted the clouds in favor of doing something a little bit different. So I'm going to open this cloud map and this looks fine. Um, it doesn't look great. I'm not going to pretend it looks great. Um, but this edge and this edge are not going to match up because this is going to be wrapped around and it's not perfect. So I'm actually going to duplicate this three times. So I have one in the center, one on, and one on each edge. Um, and I'm going to bring the transparency down to 70%. Now, if you're going to come at me and tell me that I cheated and that I went and looked at my demo composition, then I'm going to say that you need to back up because I didn't do that. Um, <laughs> so now I'm going to mask this out. So I'm going to select this one here. And I'm just going to kind of create a crazy shape. Hit M on the keyboard, invert that, and add a feather. Like, like joie. Now, I don't really love that. And the reason is... Okay, so I'm going to do something different with this. Um, if I pre-comp this, I'm going to move all attributes to the new composition and I'm going to duplicate this twice. One I'm going to put on the left, one I'm going to put on the right, and one still in the center. Making them all invisible. I'm actually going to also hit T on the keyboard and set them all to 70% luminance or brightness. And I'm going to start masking this bad boy out. and hit M on the keyboard, invert that, and add a feather to it. Just like that. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing to all of these. And you're gonna say, why? Why would you waste your time with this? Well, the reason is, is that um, the edges of this get wrapped around a sphere and it's gonna look like crap because there's gonna be a big line going across and it's not gonna make a bit of sense. Um, if you just trust me, you could try it without it and you're going to see a line and it's going to be really annoying. Um, I actually want a mask. So you want to make sure the layer is selected or else you're going to get some really, you know, crazy shape, but you want a mask. This last one, I don't have to invert. So I'm just going to do that and I'll make them all visible. And you get something that looks pretty crazy. So I'm going to just rotate the center one by 180. Okay. And now I'm going to go back to the realist earth. 
and I am going to duplicate the Earth Knight and the white, control D. But for the Earth Knight, I'm gonna select it and hold Alt and drag in the clouds. And we're halfway there, as you can see, but I'm gonna make it inverted Luma Mat. And that looks pretty crazy. And I understand that that looks crazy. And that's because I think the white needs to go underneath the clouds and the Luma Mat needs to go on like that. So let's make sure this is is working right and it is so basically what we did is we said if if this wherever it's white here make it this white layer visible wherever it's black make it invisible and since this cloud has a lot of black and the lighting is set up in a particular way. Um, it's making this white layer visible. However, you're getting we're getting some weird artifacting here on the on the black level. So on this clouds layer, I'm just gonna change the ambient light and and I'm also gonna get rid of the light intensity and that really didn't do anything um, too drastic. Hmm. I think that that looks pretty fine actually. Um, I think that that edge looks a little rough right there, but the rest of it looks good. So I'm just gonna Make sure that when I do this animation, that part isn't shown. Simple as that. Um, thinking about ways to add a drop shadow to this. Um, I mean, one way you could do it is you could duplicate the layer. That's really not great. Um, the shadow, I, I don't think is that important. Is that critical? Um, let's watch this. So I'm gonna stop this composition and totally just write everything by doing one last thing. Um, if I add a drop shadow to this earth base, um, you can't see it, but if I make it white and I increase the softness and, and decrease the opacity and make it like baby blue. Why is that purple and that blue? How is purple, how is blue going to white turn into purple? crazy you kind of get a cool effect there where like the sun is I don't know there's it's kind of cool maybe it's not that cool I could change the direction obviously oh 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 I'm gonna do one last thing so all of this kind of rotates together and it looks okay it looks fine um, but one thing that you can add that commit that'll makes it look way cooler is on this clouds um, the rotation. So let me just open this up. The rotation under Y. If I do like times 1.02, it will actually rotate slightly faster, maybe 1.06. So the clouds are gonna rotate 6% faster than the ground. Um, so that could look cool, but I think that it actually needs to be much more crazy, like 1.1. 1 .1. So now it looks like you kind of get a parallax effect. I'm going to drop the resolution in half so you can kind of see in real time. Actually, why am I doing 1.1? I think this should be like 0.8. Well, that's a question you have to ask your physics teacher next time. 
Does the Earth spin faster than the clouds spin with the Earth? Or do they all spin at the same rate? Or which one's faster? For some reason, when I watch this, this looks kind of funky to me. I feel like the clouds move faster, so I'm going to change this back to 1.1. And then you're just gonna have to deal with it if you think that looks wrong and you could just do it differently when you do it but that adds kind of like a parallax effect which i think looks awesome and the animation goes faster for some reason anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this video it was a little bit long but i actually thought it was really fun so if you enjoyed this video give it a like subscribe check out our discord channel if you want to hang out and uh, if you want to download this project file and use it on your uh a documentary maybe on National Geographic or Discovery Channel. You can download it on our Patreon account at the $3 level. Anyways guys, thanks for watching.